welcome to Cork Crazy Lancashire, the show with plenty of horsepower. And on today's show, we sample some more Formula One at Three Sisters Raceway. Ferraris, Lanciers, well, this guy we meet, he's got them all. And Pat finds yet another one for us in her awesome collection. Now, while strolling down Blackpool Prom, I bumped into a guy who challenged me with a difficult motoring decision to simply choose my favourite car out of these four. Wouldn't you say that I'm a lucky girl? And starting off with a Nissan Skyline GTR. It's a 2.6 litre engine and it's souped up to 400 brake horsepower. And what about the little more classy BMW M3? It's a 3.2 litre engine pushing out 320 brake horsepower. And we have the slightly more refined Porsche Boxster. It's top of the range, it's the Tiptronic. It's got a 2.5 litre engine and it's putting out 220 brake horsepower. But what about this beast over here? It's the TVR Griffith 500. It's got a beast of a five litre engine underneath there and it's got 350 brake horsepower. And guess what? I have been driving them all day. It's a Nissan Skyline GTR. It's got 400 brake horsepower and it goes <laughs> now, I knew the Nissan Skyline had to have something pretty special in the power and handling department, but nothing prepared me for the awesome adrenaline rush that lay underfoot. After bombing down those lovely Lancashire lanes at speeds my dad would be proud of, I realised that this was no Skylark, but more airline. Using one of the most advanced traction control systems of its kind, the car distributes power to each individual wheel as and when required. Couple this with a smooth but punchy twin turbo V6 engine and you've got the perfect mean machine. Well, it wears the right logo, it's very well built, rear wheel drive, mid-engine, it's a good all-round car. But it's such a good all-rounder that it's just so lazy to drive and was almost too good to be true. The Tiptronic gear shift made a refreshing change, but of course it slows it down from a standing start. What it really needs is a good doctor to transplant that gearbox into manual. Estrel Blue, eh? Another car to match my outfit. Smooth, powerful, sleek, comfortable but a little bit bland, mm, it's the perfect eye-catching cruiser. A broad range of power in all the gears and happy in town or flat out. Now maybe I'm a little spoilt with the Skyline, but it just didn't challenge me enough. I felt a bit of sway, it didn't actually feel as firm as what the Porsche did. But I suppose with the five litre engine in, it's gonna be a little bit boat-like. Feel that power. The tarmac tearing Griffith, but just around the corner and lovingly built by the locals, simply oozes character. And in the design states, they tore up the rule book, creating a beast with a unique shape and some very sexy lines. Now, on first appearance, it kind of growled at me, but then it smiled as I slithered into the awesome cockpit and thundered down the road. I did strain to reach that slightly stiff clutch and yank that gear stick to rip through those gears. But it was love at first drive, with my piece of Blackpool Rock. Now the Skyline. Well, without a doubt, it was the best handling car I've ever driven. I had so much fun in that. I can't wait to get back in it, if I'm lucky. Now the BMW M3, very nice, very smooth. More of a classy kind of cruising kind of ride. Great for the seafront at Blackpool. The Boxster, very, very nice. Again, very sleek. It's a pity it's automatic, really. I would have liked to have a, you know, a little go in a, in a manual Boxster. But moving on to the TVR Griffiths, without a doubt, it's an absolute beast. It was my favourite car of all of them. Perfect for cruising, or should I say bruising, down these Lancashire lanes. But it wouldn't have been possible without the help of these guys. Right then, guys, are we ready for a cruise? Definitely. Come on, me <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys, guys, bring the cars back. They said I could have another go in the skyline. Oh. <laughs> 
Be prepared, Dave. Be prepared. That is just magic. There it is. Just. I felt a lot more in control of that than the Formula Ford, really? which I didn't think I was going to be at all. It's the extra yeah, grip. you've got. You yeah, just... you've got to remember though. But I didn't feel as I was running out of grip with the Formula Ford, you know. No, no it's just I a different the... type of grip. So yeah, it's just the, the extra feel of grip yeah. gives you more confidence. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to remember though that you know if we put you straight in this at nine o'clock this morning, you wouldn't oh, feel that. No, way. I, well, I wouldn't be here now, would I? Yeah. Well, that's, that's you know you need oh, to go man. through this um, magic, this learning curve. No, this is this is cracking. And you've still got the big boy to come. And welcome back to Car Crazy Lancashire here at Aintree Raceway. And if you haven't already guessed, it's Formula One! Well, the ultimate test, and this is what the guys really came on the course for, because it's their chance to be a Formula One driver. They're going to have to remember everything they've learnt and put it into the best few laps of their lives. Oh, now then, Rowan, you've got a bit of an advantage over the other guys, because uh, you race wrong. Formula Fords, is that right? I do, yes. OK, and it was your first experience staying in Formula 3? Formula 3, Formula 1, yeah. OK, so this is the big one. That's it, just mm. something a bit different with wings and slicks. <laughs> OK, so, so what are you expecting to experience, really, the speed factor? Just the amount of power, and the, obviously the speed factor, and mm -hmm. driving something that a Formula 1 driver has actually driven before in the past. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and you're racing tomorrow, so these might really be. Yeah, I'm racing tomorrow at Alton Park, yeah. You probably do really well tomorrow. Probably wants to race now, probably wanna race this instead. <laughs> yeah, <you're... laughs> okay, any sponsors out there? <laughs> yeah, well, okay. That's right. a hard thing. I'm gonna let you get strapped in and uh, good luck and we'll have a quick word and see your reaction when you get back. Great. Alright, cheers. <laughs> Technical hitch there, but a uh, couple of minutes and we're all ready to go back on the road. Um, it was a uh, the brake pipe, I think. But uh, don't worry, you'll be all right. You got back <laughs> out again. <laughs> that was uh, some really skilled, superb driving. Right. Right there. You were going very well. We were all very impressed. How did it feel? Absolutely brilliant. I was actually surprised how easy it was to drive compared really? to the other ones. Yeah, but it's absolutely. I don't think the word that you could describe the way you feel when you're driving it. It's the power. And... I don't know, it's just outstanding. It's so exciting yeah, standing on the side washing. God knows what it's like. You'll see new cartwheels when I get out afterwards. <laughs> well, it looked pretty good from where we were standing, so are you ready for another run? Certainly am. Okay, off we go then. Great. Cheers. <laughs> Now then, now then, how do you feel? Absolutely out of this world, it really was. It was an experience which you have to experience for yourself, I couldn't tell you about it, it was really? just absolutely like nothing else, it was like being on Star Trek. Oh, wow, yeah. do you feel like a star? Uh, no, no, do you see the way I drove? No. <laughs> yeah, you're no, I think Jensen, well. Jensen Button keeps his job, I think. But, uh, All right, you're not giving up your day job? No, not yet, not yet, but I'd like to do this on a Saturday. I think it was really... Uh, well, it's just undescribable. Going through the crescendo yeah. of all of these cars is just... Yeah. I mean, you have to go through the earlier cars to have any chance of not killing yourself on the first bend with that. But it really imagine. was, really, really was good. Do you know the one thing we noticed about you when you were going around the track was your neck and your head was wobbling so much, you know, with, with the force and the... You notice it at the start when your eyes start wobbling in the socket, when it just <laughs> start, starts off, you know, and you think, God, if this is going to happen, I'll never see the bend. But then as soon as you get going, you don't, you don't realise at all. You know, you're just sort of bracing yeah. yourself against it. I wasn't, wasn't taking the four Gs that the Formula One cars, uh, real cars do, you know, or real drivers do. Has it made you realise how fit you actually have to be to drive for hours like yes. you guys do? <laughs> yes, <laughs> every time I come out I feel as if I've had a bath or a shower, but it is, uh, it is quite tiring. Now then, come on, tell us. I don't, I don't know whether anybody else has said it, but I'm just thinking going around there that uh, 
the likes of Schumacher and his boys have my total admiration because I mean that was just 10 laps of a one mile circuit and these guys are driving 200 miles in these things. Uh, they make it look so easy, don't and they? You've, you've got traction control on the car, and as you put your foot down, you know that if you didn't have that traction control, you'd be off the circuit because you just feel the car wobble, and it's... Yeah. But, I mean, it's just one experience. Well, you look fantastic out there. Oh, thank you. And <laughs> it we felt can tell fantastic. You, you're yeah. so elated. It's wow. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to come down now. I don't know. We're going to go and have a beer or something up there. You'll not sleep for a week. <laughs> I, don't think so. I can't wait to bring my wife and tell her all about it. I don't think I'm going to describe it to her, but uh, no, it's just absolutely excellent. Fantastic. Try it. And that's all we've got time for from the Formula One experience. But join me next time when we'll be meeting someone who could be the next Jensen Button. And I'll be finding out how comfy those race seats really are. Hmm. Now then, we're back in Blackpool. And I'm here again, once again, with Pat Mancini. And we have another beauty in her beloved car collection. Now, Pat, this one's very special, isn't it? She's even got a name. Yeah, this is Isabel. This is Isabel. One night I was sitting uh, next to a lady at a banquet and the mother had just died and she heard that, that my husband collected cars so she said, mm -hmm. would you like to have a look at it? Well, when we saw it, you know, uh, we both just loved it. And in minutes, we did the deal. And as she handed me the key, because yeah. it was her mother's one owner, there was a, a, a leather, on the leather part was yeah. a name Isabel. Mm -hmm. So I said, what does that mean? She said, my mother's name, Isabel. I said, well, you take the key ring and just give me the key. I said, it's a keepsake. She said, no, it goes with the car. I don't want it separated. So that's oh. how she got the name of Isabel. And um, it, it, it's lovely, really. I mean, when you look at it, all the veneer in the front, in, in the, in the steering wheel, it's all veneered. Um, yeah. It wants really rear pulsion, but it, it's wonderful. I love the dashboard. It's all like... Uh, Looks like an aeroplane thing, doesn't it? Well, of course, it? in its day, it would have been very plush. Yes, yes, I mean, yes. It yes. But it, it is quite collectible, I believe, these cars. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell it. It's lovely. And it's still its, its original colour. Oh, you are a good owner. Aren't oh, you? yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Pat, thanks They don't for that make story. them like this today. Hey, they don't. They don't make them like this today. <laughs> so join us again after the break for plenty more fun on Car Crazy Lancashire. It's Paul Waite and he's the boy with all the toys, aren't you Paul? And this is just one of them, a stunning sleek looking Evo 6, which Paul's going to tell us all about. Yeah, it's, um, it, it is part of the collection, it's um, a year 2000 Evo 6, which has been slightly tweaked uh, to produce just, just over 330 horsepower uh, by my favourite tuner, um, hence it's bad real power as opposed to bogus Japanese horsepower. Now you say slightly tweaked, but slightly in your books, maybe rather larger everyone else's books. This is in fact the slowest car in my, my collection, yes. But for someone else, it would be probably the fastest car they'd ever get to drive. Possibly, yes. Now tell us a bit about it then, Paul. What's under the bonnet here? It's a two litre turbocharged four. Um, what we've done so far is uh, a turbo, hybrid turbo, uh, different exhaust system, decatted, uh, and a different induction system. So what's it like when you flat out on the motorway? Oh, I wouldn't dream of going flat out on the motorway. <laughs> Tell us another. <laughs> All right, then let's move on to this next little beauty here. We have the Integrale. Yes. Now, is this the firm favourite of yours, isn't it? This is my favourite car, yes. All Integrales are my favourite. Come on, give us some stats. What's the brake course? 360 horsepower. Um, it is probably, it's, it's certainly much quicker than Evo 6 A to B. Yeah. Um, in fact, I would say it's the best handling car I've ever driven. Really? Mm. And you've had this one a few years, haven't you? Yes, I have, yeah. Yeah, I bought it new and I, if, uh, if I can, I don't want to sell it. You know, if I can afford to hang on to it, then it's, I'm going to keep it. Do you tend to find that when you're in the uh, 
this car, you tend to find the rally boys would rather race you than when you're in something a little more prestigious? It's a good question. Yes, this car, as opposed to any of the other cars, I do get a lot of challenges, particularly from Nova drivers, which is quite amusing. <laughs> but of course, you've got all these, the, the beauty about being in Lancashire is all the twisty, windy lanes and then the long motorways. Yes. So you really get to test the cars in this part very, of the Very, very much so. Yes, it's probably one of the better areas in the country to, uh, to explore the limits of your car, let's say. Yeah, we would say. OK, now let's move on to number three. And what an awesome machine this is. And there's only how many? Uh, in white, currently, um, there are five. My goodness, five in the world. But just tell me one question. Why is those two facing front and this one facing back? Because in my opinion, this car has the prettiest bottom of them all. I, I think it's really stunning from the rear. It is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Those twin eggs are. What kind of speed have you had out of the test, Ross? Um, I've had, actually had it flat out, of course, on a private road. But this is the Koenig version, so it, ex it exceeds 200 miles an hour. How do Lancashire people react? When you see this coming down the road? Um, the, the best reaction of all is in the Ferrari because 99% uh, of the time people are pleased to see it and I get smiles as opposed to driving the Porsche when people don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Connotations of yuppies, I think. <laughs> I can imagine. So when you're actually driving it, is it very luxurious or does it, has it got that perfect combination of luxury and, and the sporty? I wouldn't sporty say it's feel. luxurious at all. It's very, very sporty. It's, it's quite hard suspension. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the engine mode. Uh, I, I have a, a very good ice install in this car and I can honestly say I've never had it switched on because I have the window open just listening to the exhaust. It yeah. is stunning. They do make an Makes incredible sound. Yeah. Hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Now Paul, I've noticed that these cars all have one thing in common. And on the rear here we've got all the number plates HSU. So what's this all about? Yes, um, if ever, not that it ever happens, I'm chased by Her Majesty's Constabulary. Um, the cars or the car they're pursuing is described as a high-speed unit. So I basically put them on to take the mickey. <laughs> oh, you naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, here we have Paul and these three high-speed units. And uh, thanks for that, Paul. And may You're you welcome. drive them and enjoy them for many, many years to come. When, when you're going to an old man. Uh, too late, but uh, I'm still 16 going on 60. <laughs> the man with all the toys. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. To most people, Rob Hallam is just your average guy in the office. But when his secret boss gives him the call, he springs into action. That's because Rob Hallam has a secret identity. He is none other than... Reverend Bob, the priest unleashed. My viewers, Reverend Bob here, the Priest Unleashed, crusading across Lancashire on all matters motoring. Now this week the boss has sent me down to uh, Blackburn here, and I'll tell you for why. The pathway to heaven, right, smooth as silk, lined with gold, but the pathways and roads around Lancashire, rough as a bear's armrest, if you know what I'm saying, and I think the council's taking a mick, but don't just take my word for it, let's get the word on the street. Excuse me, love, uh, Reverend Bobby. We're just doing a bit of a survey about the state of the roads in Lancashire, and I notice you're. Uh, dry... Yeah? What, uh, whereabouts are you from? Liston. Right, and are they always digging them up around there? Uh, yes. So, what, uh, what do you think they could do to, to sort the problem out? I don't know really. What could they do? We're doing a bit of a survey on the state of Lancashire's roads and pavements. Have you got any views on that? Yeah, they're ridiculous. They want sorting out with the amount of money we spend on with cars, taxes, and whatever. Hey, where have you been all day? This is exactly the sort of stuff we want. No, I'm, I drive my car myself, like so. I mean, and I've just already put two shocks on the back, so it cost me a fortune. So why, why is the government not spending? Do you know what I mean? Apparently, all these roads are kept perfectly smooth with our road tax and stuff like that. I mean, uh, what have you got to say about that one? No comment. No, exactly. And we all know what he means by that. Anyway, thanks for talking to us, chap. Okay. Excuse me, love. Sorry to bother you there, we're doing a bit of a survey about the state of the roads. I didn't know you had any gravel in the back to fill these potholes in. But uh, what, do you, what do you find? I know she got the kids in the back, it must be a bumpy ride for them sometimes. Yeah. yeah. What, what would you do to sort it out? No idea. 
after earning enough off the car park charges. There you go, another angle on it, car park charges to keep them smooth. How much is it here? What? Probably about nine quid for ten minutes, somewhere he's around our way. Look at the state of these, have a look at that. Look at that, I've got size 13 feet and they nearly get lost in there. Drives you mad. What I'm doing out and about today in Blackburn, we're talking about conditions of roads and pavements and that sort of thing, because I think it's appalling. Have you got any views on that yourself? Where are you from? Uh, we're from uh, from Manchester, but uh, for Car Crazy Lancashire. Car Crazy Lancashire. Um, in, in general, they're not too bad, but some of them aren't that terrific, are they? Because a little bird tells me that road tax and things like that go for keeping the road smooth, but I don't see much uh, of it. No, I don't think they do, actually, no. Excuse me, love, have you got to see what I mean? Does it mean to be Prime Minister? I saw the traffic guard first. Yeah, how'd you do that? Saw the traffic guard. I know that one, I've got that. Have you? <laughs> Listen to it. I saw all the traffic on one way system and enough cars, but uh, car parking spaces and that. Right. Yeah, that's how right. I did it. Top man. Hey, thanks for chatting to us. All right, take it easy. <laughs> Tell me you're not lost for words, lads. <laughs> lost for words. <laughs> do, you do, do you do a lot of mileage and you buy all the rubbish in it? I reckon you do spend a bit of time in this van, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah what are you up to? You're not on a bank, oh, you're not on a bank, bank raid in here. Are you? <laughs> so come on, what do you think about these roads? We pay a lot of tax and things for that. He spoke, he spoke. Get in there, Granger. Yeah, I don't know. They're horrible, aren't they? Crap. What about the pavements when you come out from the pub on a Friday night and you've had your two pints and what have you? I don't know. I just fall out anyway. <laughs> Word on the street about the condition of these roads, like one I've just nearly fallen in a hole there. What do you, uh, what do you think about it? They could maybe do with a little bit of uh, repair here and there. Well, are you from Lancashire, yeah? Whereabouts? Blackburn. Blackburn, born and bred. Have you got a large car? No. <laughs> I'm only messing with you there, darling. Hey, have a nice day anyway. And it's this sort of thing that everyone's getting so wound up about. But while the roads in Blackburn might be atrocious, yeah? The people are lovely. And just remember, the man upstairs, he loves every one of you. Later. So join us next week when we'll be talking to more people with a bit more horsepower than this.